for verifiable function secret sharing um, by Leo De Castro and uh, Antigone. And Leo will uh, give the Great. talk. Yep. Great. Hi. Uh, yeah, so um, we're talking about uh, lightweight, maliciously secure, verifiable function secret sharing. Um, so in this in this talk, uh, we'll be constructing a uh, two-party function secret sharing scheme for distributed point functions uh, that will be verifiable, uh, maliciously secure, uh, unconstrained, which means that it will support any output group and any set of evaluation points. Uh, it will be uh, concretely efficient. Uh, we'll start with the very efficient uh, scheme of uh, Boyle, Gilboa, and Ishai, and um, we will use only uh, symmetric key operations to uh, uh, build our verifiable uh, te technique. And we'll also uh, extend this to uh, multipoint functions, kind of beyond the uh, naive construction. Uh, this is in contrast to prior works that are constrained either in their security or in the output uh, space that they sub support. And prior works also uh, use public key operations and MPC. Uh, so. Everything in this talk will be in the two server model, uh, which is where the uh, client talks to two servers at once. The, the two servers are allowed to communicate with one another, but really the main assumption that we have here is that at least one of the servers is always honest. Uh, so what does that really mean in terms of malicious security? It, it means that we can handle the uh, malicious corruption of any one of these three parties. So in particular for a uh, corrupted client, if the, the client tries to send a malformed phone, function secret share, um, the servers will catch the client. And uh, if one of the servers is corrupted, we have the uh, client's privacy is maintained. Uh, just one quick note, uh, this model might not seem as uh, uh, natural uh, as uh, this, this model might seem a bit con contrived, but actually be because you can build uh, so many uh, efficient protocols in this model is actually used uh, quite a bit in uh, practice. Many uh, US states use this like Apple and uh, Google uh, to, to server uh, uh, protocol to collect COVID data. Uh, Mozilla uses uh, a multi-server protocol uh, to collect and store private br uh, uh, browser data. Um, okay, so a uh, brief introduction on function secret sharing. Uh, what is function secret sharing? It's a, it's a secret sharing scheme for functions. Uh, what does that mean? Well, you can take a function and share it into uh, two sh shares here, uh, K0 and K1. And these sh shares have a natural hiding property where if you see only one share, uh, you don't learn anything about the function F. Uh, and these shares have a nice property where they can be evaluated. So you can take an, an element X in the function domain and evaluate the uh, share at X. And what you get out is an additive share of the function output at X. So if uh, server zero and server one, you e evaluate their uh, shares at the same point X, they will get uh, additive shares of the function output at, at X. Uh, right. So. Um, the, uh, the function class that we'll be focusing on here is the class of point functions. Uh, point functions are quite simple, but quite powerful. Uh, they're specified by a single input output pair, uh, alpha and beta. And really the uh, function is just, if the input is alpha, you output beta, otherwise you just output zero. Um, a uh, FSS for point functions is called a distributed point function scheme. And just to quick note, we're not trying to hide the fact that F is a point function. We're trying to hide uh, which non-zero point uh, F is specified by. Uh, so um, we're going to be building off of the uh, FSS scheme of Boyle, Gilboa, and Ishai. Uh, this is a very efficient scheme. I'm not going to go into the details of this. Uh, scheme. This uh, tree is just here to refresh your memory if you've seen this scheme before. Um, the uh, key idea behind this, this scheme, though, is that the point function uh, is very close to the zero function. And sharing the zero function is very easy uh, via uh, PRFs. You just send the two servers uh, the same PRF seed, uh, and then you just have server one uh, negate their output. Um, so if you want to then move to uh, um, point functions, you just puncture this uh, PRF at some point. You have to hide the point that you're puncturing at. But uh, yeah, this is uh, the idea behind their uh, work. And uh, really, the, the, the main takeaway here is the efficiency. So um, for an output space of size 2 to the n, uh, 
this this construction um, has key sizes of size lambda times n, and the uh, evaluation time is also lambda times times n. It's a, it's a depth n tree, and you e evaluate a constant number of PRGs at each level. Uh, right. So how do we verify that a point function share is, is well formed? Well, uh, we start with uh, uh, the servers having shares of some output vector y. And this y is uh, the set of uh, evaluations on whatever points the servers have chosen to uh, evaluate their uh, share set. We're assuming that the servers are evaluating on the same set. And really, all the servers are trying to trying to check is um, that y is only non-zero in at most one location. So, like y is the truth table of some some point function. Uh, so, prior works uh, for this are based off of linear sketching and MPC, and they really all re rely on this uh, schwartz zippel lemma. Uh, which really limits uh, the technique because the short zippel lemma relies on having a very large output output field. So you can really only uh, hope to get an output field of size two to the lambda. And also, uh, prior works only achieve semi honest security for a general output space. Um, the the work of uh, Bonet, uh, Boyle, Corgan, Gibbs, Gilboa, and Ishai. Um, achieves uh, malicious security when the valid betas are in zero are, are zero or one, but crucially, like you still have to share these uh, binary values over a, a large field. And then all of these works re require uh, like public key operations and MPC. So uh, there's definitely room for improvement. Okay, so let's uh, move into this this work. Uh, we, uh, we we start with the with a similar obs observation that uh, the point function is very close to the zero function. And the zero function is actually very easy to verify because uh, if the only valid value for y is all zeros, that means that the share held by server one is the negation of the share held by server zero. So you can just have server one uh, negate their, uh, their share, and now the servers have the same vector, which means that the uh, verification check is just an equality check, which can be done by just hashing down these vectors and checking that the hashes are equal. So one like key observation here is that because all honest shares will pass this uh, test, this is a very nice defense against a malicious server because a malicious server we assume has only honest shares. So uh, this uh, malicious server will not receive any new information from this check. It, it, it already has the, the hash that it's going to receive from the other server. Uh, right, so now we're going to let, uh, uh, sketch the idea to take this, this technique from uh, zero points to one point. Uh, we're gonna really just do the toy version of this, of this idea. Um, this is a central idea to the boyle gilboa ishai construction. If you uh, are familiar with it, this will look Familiar, uh, but yeah. So let's uh, let's uh, begin. So uh, the servers have uh, shares of a vector y that is that is zero in every location except for some point where it's the uh, shares of beta. And we want to somehow have the uh, client uh, correct that uh, share of beta to be a share of zero, or to perform some correction operation such that uh, the shares that the servers have become the same. Uh, so we want to uh, define this uh, correction operation. That's a function of the share and some correction word that the, that the client has sent to both servers. And this correction operation needs to have the following properties. First, it needs to map all of the shares of zero to be the same, to be uh, equal. So we're not going to like destroy our, our equality on all of these other, other points. And it also needs to map uh, the share of beta to equal values too, so that the, the, the whole check just becomes an equality check. Uh, to make this not trivial, though, uh, we need to like have the uh, client, um, we need to rather prevent this uh, correction operation from mapping really any other value to uh, be equal. Uh, so we're going to uh, define this, this correction operation as a conditional XOR, where for each share, we're going to have a control bit T. And uh, T will tell you whether or not to XOR uh, omega to your share. So if T is zero, you just output your sh your share. Otherwise, you output your share XOR with omega. Uh, and so when the shares are zero, 
we really want these uh, T bits to be the same. That way that the operation uh, applied on the two shares will be the same and we maintain the, the, the equality uh, uh, for these shares. Uh, on the other hand, when the shares are shares of beta, we want the uh, control bits to be different so that the correction operation is, is applied as asymmetrically so that the outputs uh, will be equal. Uh, so we want to uh, apply this uh, correction operation on every uh, every share, and so we need uh, the shares to be equal for all of uh, these uh, control bits, rather, to be equal for all of the uh, zero shares and differ on the shares of beta. So the way that we're going to do this is observe that the shares of zero are equal, or they map easily to equal values, whereas the shares of beta are not equal. And so we're just going to def define some uh, deterministic predicate of the uh, sh uh, shares to generate our control bits. And uh, least significant bit is just a uh, convenient choice. You can really pick anything you would want here. And so this is what our correction operation will be. We're going to take the uh, shares and uh, take the least significant bit. If it's zero, just output the, the uh, share. Otherwise, XOR with omega. Uh, OK, so let's uh, go over this again uh, with um, a little bit closer to the real correction operation. So instead of uh, having omega be uh, the XORs of just the beta shares, we're actually going to have uh, omega be the XORs of hashes of the beta shares. This is for security. And uh, the correction operation is as follows. It takes in a uh, share U. And if you're server one, you negate your uh, share. This, this way, if, you, if the two servers have shares of zero, now their two shares are the same. Um, then they, the, the correction operation hashes the uh, share. And then if the least significant bit of the hash is one, output uh, the hash XOR with, with omega, otherwise just output uh, the hash. So this has all of the properties that we want. Uh, if the input shares are zero, then the outputs are equal. And now all the client has to do is sample the uh, function shares such that the least significant bits of the hashes are not equal. That This way, the uh, correction operation will be up, up applied asymmetrically. And uh, because there's really only one set of shares the client needs to check, and this happens with good prob probability, this doesn't uh, in incur too much overhead in the share generation. Uh, the, um, in order to defend against a malicious client, we need to then argue that the client can really only correct one uh, difference with this, uh, with this correction word. And this is not too hard to show that uh, if the client is able to do this and they found this like funny collision in the hash function, uh, this is like this XOR, XOR collision resistance uh, this is it, this is uh, given in more detail in the paper, but basically, uh, you, you know, um, we are are assuming that this XOR collision re resistance is hard for the the hash function. We have this uh, large hash function out output to make this to make this uh, hard. And um, given this given this hardness, uh, uh, it's not hard to to show that the client can only correct one one error uh, in their vector. OK, so now this gives us the full verification operation where we have uh, server 0 and server 1, beginning with uh, shares of y and their correction word omega. They apply the correct operation to uh, each element in their output vector. And then uh, they hash down this vector to be some uh, value pi. They exchange their uh, pi's and accept if they're equal. And this is secure against a malicious client. Uh, because of the XOR collision resistance of the hash function, and it's se secure against a malicious server because the, the malicious servers don't receive any new information uh, about the shares when the shares are honestly generated. Uh, just a quick note about uh, performance. Uh, the performance overhead for this verification method is very low. Uh, the, sh the share generation has a roughly 2x overhead because the client has to re resample when uh, the predicates at the uh, shares of beta are equal because you need them to be unequal in order for the correction operation to, to work correctly. Um, and the share evaluation overhead is very low because uh, if you remember that uh, GGM tree, this is basically the same complexity as just operating, uh, as just uh, um, performing one extra level in that, in that, in that tree. 
Okay, uh, so in the last few minutes, uh, we were going to ex ex extend this to multipoint functions. Uh, so first, what is a, a multipoint function? Well, it's a function with a uh, small number of non-zero points. In particular, like the uh, the number of non-zero points is not something that we're trying to trying to hide. Uh, so the uh, function is specified by a set of uh, points, uh, alpha i and beta i. And uh, these are like the only non-zero points that are going to be in the function. So if x is one of the alpha i's, then the function will output beta i, otherwise it will output zero. Uh, you can view this as the sum of t point functions. Uh, and because you can do this as the sum of t point functions, this is kind of natural, uh, naive approach to uh, building uh, distributed multipoint functions where you just concatenate t point functions. Uh, this works reasonably well until you go to evaluate. And if you have a lot of uh, non-zero points, then you have to e e evaluate every single uh, point function share in order to evaluate the multipoint function share. Uh, this is a waste of work because uh, you know that only one will evaluate to a non-zero value. So you might want to, uh, we, we want to try to reduce this uh, extra work. So the trick that we're going to use is cuckoo hashing. We're not going to go into uh, the cuckoo hashing technique, but basically what it uh, does is it packs uh, T elements into a table of size M. And the guarantee that it gives you is that if an element is in the in the table, it's only in a, it, it could only be in a constant number of locations. Uh, and these locations are specified by uh, these kappa hash functions. Um, so uh, the concrete parameters for this uh, uh, cuckoo hashing um, scheme are very good. For kappa equals three, we can get an, an overhead of less than a factor of two for this very large uh, range of, of non-zero points. Uh, so how do we uh, use cuckoo hashing to build our multipoint function shares? Well, the client takes the alpha uh, uh, points in the uh, multipoint function and in and inserts them into a cuckoo hash table with m buckets. So there's there's t points uh, where the function is non-zero, and they get mapped to a, a bucket a, a um, table with with m buckets. And then for each bucket, the client creates a distributed point function. So if the bucket has some element alpha j, then uh, the client creates a, a point function corresponding to the uh, point uh, alpha i beta i. And if the, uh, uh, or alpha j beta j rather, and if the uh, bucket is empty, then it just shares the zero function. And so the multipoint function share is just uh, the concatenation of these uh, m point function keys along with the hash, the the hash functions, and this is all sent to uh, the servers. Now, when the servers go to evaluate, um, they only need to check in instead of ev ev evaluating all t point functions, they only need to check. Uh, the point functions at the kappa locations specified by the hash function. So they hash uh, their input x with each of the hash functions. This gives them kappa indices. And uh, now they only need to check these particular kappa point, point functions uh, to see if, if x uh, evaluates to some non-zero non point. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is a huge savings when t becomes large because uh, the client performance uh, really only uh, doubles and um, the uh, server performance is kind of in independent of the uh, non-zero points. Actually, in the paper, we show a neat trick where you can actually have the server uh, evaluation time shrink as the number of non-zero points grows, but we don't have time to get into that. Um, so the only thing that we really give up here is the uh, verification tightness. You could hope that uh, the, the, the best you can really hope for here is that um, if you have uh, t point, if you have t non-zero points in your multipoint function, that you check that it really is just uh, t non-zero points in your function share. But because we have m buckets in our cuckoo hash table, we can really only check that uh, there are at most m non non-zero points in the the point function. But you know, for like uh, PSI applications and things like that, we believe this is uh, acceptable. You know, you, you you can say, oh, okay, you know, the uh, the honest client will submit a set of of size t. And I'm okay with a malicious client uh, submitting a, a set of at, at most size 2t. Two, two, two 
And uh, the other nice thing is that the verification uh, communication is uh, always two lambda bits. It's basically always going to be the same E, e quality check uh, from the uh, distributed point functions. Um, just adding on more, more point functions here is not going to uh, change the E quality check. Uh, the uh, performance is as you would expect. Uh, the factor of two overhead here is again from the the uh, in the in the in the share generation is really just from the resampling necessary uh, when the shares at beta uh, are equal for their con control bits. The sh the sharing of uh, zero is um, has very low overhead, and the share evaluation is like a very dramatic benefit. Uh, these, these dashed lines here, these, these two graphs and the share E valuation uh, um, plot the same data. Uh, and this uh, solid lines here are just so much lower than the, uh, the uh, naive construction. Uh, okay, so just to quickly wrap up, um, th this has lots of immediate applications in the two server model for a malicious peer and malicious PSI. Uh, for the next steps, we want to try to add back the uh, um, uh, constrained outputs that are necessary for some applications. If there's only one valid beta, this is pretty trivial because you you know that the shares are non-zero at only one location, so you can just shrink them all down and uh, check it, that they are shares of the right value. Um, otherwise, uh, you need to do some something more clever to defend against additive uh, attacks from a malicious server. Uh, thanks. Questions? Um, okay, so so I have one question. Mm -hmm. You you talked about DPFs. Mm -hmm. Can you do something for uh, related um, functions such as comparison functions, like an in interval? Ah, uh, that's a great question. Um, the short answer is no. Uh, the interval function uh, looks similar in the uh, underlying. Construction, but this like single correction uh, can't really transfer over. So you need to do something a little bit different. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Okay. For the final talk of the session.